What's going on everyone? Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be upgrading my one gigabit NAS to a 10 gigabit NAS. We're gonna be using the DS1621 XS Plus. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we do have Amazon storefronts and I'll put the link in the description below. My first experience with Synology was with their DS218 Plus. This was a two bay, one gigabit NAS. I loved it until I plugged in the wrong power cable to it and fried the power. After that, I upgraded to the DS418. I didn't do a lot of research about this NAS and I only bought it about a month and a half ago. After using it for some time, it's a great NAS, but I wanted a little bit more. This NAS doesn't support Docker and I can't upgrade the RAM. The DS418 only comes with two gigabits of RAM and although it was fast, it didn't seem as snappy as my DS218 Plus, which I had upgraded it with another four gigs of RAM. So that's when I decided to go all out and get a 10 gigabit NAS. If you've been following the channel at all, you know that I've upgraded my Unify network quite a bit. I have a Unify aggregation switch. So that's gonna be powering this 10 gig network. Let's go ahead and take a look at the DS1621 XS Plus. So here we have our Synology DS1621 XS Plus. On the top we have a status light indicator and then we have alert indicators. In the middle we have a power indicator and then our LAN indicators. On the top of each drive tray we have drive indicators and then we have a USB 3.0. On the front we have our drive locks and Synology gives us drive lock keys. On the back we have two system fans, a power port, a Kensington lock and then two USB 3.0. Here we have our 10 gigabit NIC and then two one gigabit NICs. The 10 gigabit looks a little smaller than the one gigabit, but you could use a standard RJ45. Beside that, we have two eSATA ports for expansion, and then we have a PCIe slot. On the bottom, we have our feet, and then if we wanted to upgrade the RAM, we would have to take out this plate, and then we would install RAM, which we will be doing in this video. I have an eight gig RAM stick that we'll be putting in here. And then we have a console port if we need to console into the NAS. For this build, we're gonna be using the Seagate Ironwolf NAS four terabyte drives, and we're gonna populate it with six drives. So how we get the drives in, we pop the drive bay, and then we pull the tray out. And then we have the fastening clips on the side of the drive tray that we need to pull off. Once the fastening clips are off of the drive tray, we can put our hard drive in. And then we want to put our fastening clips back on. Once the clips are back on, we could put the drive tray back into the drive bay. Make sure it's seated properly and then press down. One other thing about the Synology NAS is it has two slots for M.2 SSDs cache drives. I don't have any M.2 SSDs, so we won't be doing that in this video, but I plan on doing it in a future video. Now if we want to upgrade the RAM in this NAS, we need to open up the tray with a Phillips screwdriver. So I have another 8 gigs of RAM that we're going to put into here. With the RAM stick, we want to make sure that this slit lines up and then we just put it in and push and then we push it down. And now we have added another 8 gigs of RAM to our Synology NAS. This will have 16 gigs. Now I'm going to finish filling the NAS with the drives. We'll go back to my computer and go over some of the specs. Now that we've seen what the Synology DS1621 XS Plus looks like, let's look at some of the specs. It features an Intel Xeon D-1527 with four cores at 2.2 gigahertz. Included with this NAS is eight gigs of memory, but you could expand it up to 32 gigs. It has high performance of over 3100 megabits per second sequential read. Also, this NAS is scalable, so we only have six drive bays, but we could have up to 16 with the DX517. 
There's also a bunch of backup options built within Synology, the Active Backup for Business, Hyper Backup, Drive Package, and Active Backup for Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace. Also, there's a virtual machine manager built in and we'll take a look at that in later videos. Now I'm gonna go get this NAS plugged into my Unify aggregation switch and hopefully it shows up that it's running at 10 gigabit per second. Now we have our Synology plugged into our Unify aggregation switch. Since there's a physical network port on the back of the Synology NAS, I needed to buy a copper SFP. The copper SFP I went with was the 10G Tech. This copper SFP is capable of 10 gigabit for up to 30 meters, and it costs about $69 Canadian. I'll put a link in the description below. So now let's go over to my Unify aggregation switch and see if this NAS is connecting at 10 gigabit. I plugged the NAS into port two, and as we could see by the color code, we have 10 gigabit connection back to the Synology NAS. And I'm gonna go ahead and label this port, and we'll call it Synology NAS. Now there's a couple ways we could find our NAS. If you're using Unify, we could go in, check the client list, and then find the IP, and then we could go to that IP address to access our NAS. Or we could go to this web address right here. So if we go to http colon slash slash find.synology.com, it will find any Synology NAS that is currently on our network. So now we could see it searching for Synology devices. And here we could see that it's found my NAS, server name Synology NAS with an IP address of 192.168.10.220. We could see the MAC address, the serial number, the DSM version, and the model number and the status. So it's migratable. I'm gonna go ahead and press connect. Here we need to accept the end user license. And then they have a Synology privacy statement. Now it says, welcome back. We've detected that you had moved the hard drives from the DS418 to the DS1621 XS Plus, which I had four drives already in my 418 and I did move it over. You can migrate your data to your new Synology NAS now, and I'm gonna do that, so we'll press migrate. Now there's a couple different migration options. So the first one is migration, keep my data and most of the settings. And the second one is reinstallation. So reinstall Synology NAS and keep my data. We're gonna go with the migration and press next. Now it's telling us that we're gonna install the latest DSM version and we'll press install now. Now your Synology NAS will be ready in about 10 minutes. Once it's finished, we'll look over some of the interface. The migration has finished and now we're sitting on my Synology NAS. We could see the system health and everything is healthy. And we also have a resource monitor, so it's gonna show us our LAN statistics, our CPU, and our RAM. If we click on control panel and then go to network, and then click on network interface, we could see that LAN one is connected. If we click on the drop down menu, we could see the network status is at 10,000 megabits per second. So that's our 10 gig interface in full duplex and the MTU size is 1500. 1500 MTU is default. We're gonna enable jumble frames in a later video that will set the MTU higher. If we scroll down on the left pane a little bit, we could go to the info center and we could see the total physical memory is at 16 gigs. So I added that second card to it. At the top, we have our package center. We can look at all their packages, which they have quite a bit. They have the VPN, they have Synology surveillance station, and they also have Docker, which we'll be installing later on. One great tool that comes built in with your Synology is the security advisor. And I recommend you going through all the steps in fixing whatever warnings they have, which I'll be doing after this video. So that's pretty much it. This is a base overview of my new 10 gig Synology NAS. We'll be diving deeper into Synology videos later on. Right now, my home is only cabled with Cat5e networking. So we're gonna be cabling it with Cat6a this week. After we do that, we'll do some throughput tests to make sure that we're getting the best speeds possible. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.